fine. You'll just get more flip flops that way. All right, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna talk about how to use fondant. And fondant is sort of like molding clay. If you've ever worked with molding clay, it's sort of the same thing. It just doesn't taste like molding clay. Um, and this is a store-bought bakery. I buy this from a, a professional bakery. Um, so this is the same kind of fondant that is used when professional bakers make fondant. Now fondant is not inexpensive. Um, one of these packages of fondant is about eight to ten dollars per package. Okay. Um, one of these packages will cover one layer of cake. So you will have extra fondant um, available that you can use for other things other than this one particular cake, okay? Um, your flip-flops have a main part that is covered in pink, as you can see. So what you should do is before you start working with the fondant, you should warm it up in your hands. So you should be holding on to it. And when you can start kind of, it's pliable, then take your scissors, open it up, and it'll be ready for you to start working with. The other thing you wanna do before you start working with fondant is um, you wanna kinda have all your shapes ready and cut everything out. So I've just got the fondant here that I am going to just quickly show you a lesson on that and then we'll talk about how to cut the cake and everything. Now fondant, the more you work with it, the stickier it gets. There's a couple things that you can use to help fondant not be sticky, and that is powdered sugar or cornstarch. And so before I start doing any work with it, I usually get a little powdered sugar, and there's some of this provided in your kits. You each have a little cup full of powdered sugar in there. Why I like using powdered sugar is the more you start working with it, the more it just starts kind of um, dissipating right back into the fondant, okay? But it helps it not be sticky. You also have a little fondant roller here. You know, if you want something bigger and you have a rolling pin at your house, you can totally use that too. So all I'm doing is I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna press on the fondant and I'm turning it as I'm working with it. And I'm just gonna flatten out my fondant, okay? And I want to be able to make it big enough that I can get, an, I wanna go over the size of my template. So I need to have enough um, of this fondant rolled out so that I can make two flip-flops out of it, okay? And one thing with fondant is you can keep re-rolling it um, and reshaping it. And if it starts to get dry, you can just put it in um, a Ziploc bag for a few minutes, hold it with your hands, and you can add a little bit of water to it, okay? Not very much. Corn syrup is another thing that you can use. So as you can see, I've been stretching this out. I'm not trying to get it really thin because the thinner it is, it's also harder to work with. Um, and so since we have kids working with this, I don't want to get it too thin, all right? That's about the size I want to go with for right now. Now I have my two flip-flop shapes and I'm going to lay them on here. And like I said, I want to cut them about a half an inch bigger than the actual piece of um, my template for right here. So I'm just gonna kinda gently follow around and I'm gonna go a little bit bigger than the actual template. And I'll explain why here in a minute. All right, I'm not doing it perfect. It does not have to be a perfect, okay? I'm just going around because I just want something to be able to mold with around it. So I'm just quickly going around and around. And as you can see, I went much bigger than my template, okay? I did not do it perfect. Doesn't have to be perfect, all right? Now that I've got that done, I've got this extra fondant. I'm just gonna hold this aside and I'm squishing it together. And I'm gonna put it back in my package for right now so it doesn't get dried out so I can use it for something else later. All right, let's talk about how do we get our flip-flop cutouts. So now I'm gonna take my template and I'm gonna lay it on top of my cake. I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna trace around it and I'm just pushing up and down, up and down, up and down, and I'm following the shape of the template. If it's a little bigger, that's not a big deal, all right? Now each flip-flop, each foot has a different shape to it. So you gotta use both templates to cut out your shape. And I'm going around and around and around till I get both pieces covered. All right, now I can take 
and I'm going to remove my excess cake. I'm removing the excess cake. This we're gonna turn into our cake pops later. But right now I'm just gently pulling the cake up and I'm going around this so that my flip flops are all by themselves just hanging on my tray, okay? I'll hold that up a little bit so you can see that. See what I'm talking about? Very cool. It sounds, smells like one of those cakes might be getting done. Okay. Do you want to? So, so could somebody else hold on for a minute? Could somebody open the oven up over there and just take a peek and see if those cakes are done over there? And if so, we can grab them. We're multitasking yeah. here, Sorry, so we're. Do, uh, <laughs> we're. Do they need a few more minutes, or are they done? That one looks good. All right. Here is a hot pad. Excuse me for a minute. Get two out. Would you mind taking it out of the oven for us? Thank you. Um, yes, here is a toothpick for a test. There you go. Thank you. All right, I'm back. And she's back. All right, so now the next thing we're going to do is we have to make a crumb coat on our flip flops. So everybody has a little container of frosting. If you didn't get one in your kit, just use a little bit of frosting you may have around your house. If you don't have frosting, you can also sometimes just use a little corn syrup on here just so it's a little stickier to hold it. I'm going to take the paper off because it's not going to taste very good on, on here. Now, when you are crumb coating a cake, it is very, very important um, to work quickly. Okay, I'm just going to get this out of the way here. I'm going to take these off of my paper just so I have a clean surface to work on. And I'm working very gently. We did put these in the freezer, so they have frozen a little bit. Okay, I'm washing my hands. Because when you're working with fondant, it's really important to not have your hands be very sticky. Could I borrow your frosting over there and I'll bring you some more in just a minute. Awesome. You also all got a um, spatula to use to go ahead and frost your cakes with. So you can use those also. So I'm gonna check and make sure I don't have one. But I do not have one here. So I am gonna grab one, just a moment. All right, now this is the tricky part. Don't, don't worry about the frosting as part. Don't worry if it's not perfect. All you're looking for is this to be glue. All you're looking for is for glue. So I'm just putting the tiniest amount on here and that's all I'm gonna do, okay? It's just the glue to hold the fondant on. And like I said, you don't have to have it on there either, okay? The more you try and frost the cake, the more it's gonna rip, okay? So work quickly with it. Again, make sure your hands are clean. Now I'm gonna take my piece of fondant and I am going to get it, it's neat, neat, warm it up a little bit with my hands before I put it on there. And I'm gonna lay it on top of, I wonder if I have the right one for the right foot. I think this is the right one. All right. I'm gonna lay it on top and I'm gonna kind of stretch it and pull it at the same time. Now, you're gonna notice that it doesn't fit exactly on here, okay? Now I can take my knife and I can cut around it a little bit and I'm forming it with my hands as I do this. Now, the, the bottom of the flip-flop, if you look at the picture, is in green, right? Yeah. So there's a whole nother piece that's gonna go around the bottom. So don't worry about making it perfect to start with here. I'm gonna transfer it to here so it's a little easier to see, okay? Then I'm gonna work on my second piece. And again, I'm stretching it and warming it with my hands so it kind of works a little bit because it's gotten cool just as it's sitting there and it's not as pliable or stretchy um, until you work it with your hands a little bit. You can also tuck, tuck the fondant under when you're working with it too. You can also make your own fondant and making your own fondant actually tastes way better, I'll be honest. You can make marshmallow fondant. And for that, all you need is a bag of marshmallows, a little water, you microwave it, make it like mar marshmallow fluff. And then you keep adding powdered sugar to it and a little bit of shortening and you knead it and it tastes awesome and you make your own um, fondant. So now I've got my flip flops at this point. 
Okay, they're looking like this. Now the next step is I'm gonna work with my green and I'm gonna go around the edges and I'm just gonna make a piece with it. Every time you work with it, just work it with the rolling pin to get it to the right thickness. Um, you can make slashes in it with your knives. Um, with the pineapples, sometimes it's easier to just find something round and cut that circle out and then reshape it to be like a pineapple. Um, and then with your prongs, again, it's just free forming. There's no right or wrong way to doing it. However, your pineapples turn out, it's just fine. Okay, so just have fun with it. If it starts to get sticky for you, add more powdered sugar. And when you're going to apply the um, pineapples to it, you can brush it with a little corn syrup on there to stick with it, or you can even use a little water on here and they'll stick that way too. Good luck.